その爆撃機は核兵器も搭載できる戦略爆撃機です長距離爆撃機24機に対して出動準備が強化されている大空襲の兆候だ本格的に冬が到来している中ウクライナの人々は電気も暖房もない生活を強いられていますロシアが連日のように行っているインフラ施設への攻撃が原因ですその攻撃が止む兆しはありません支援国は今回の件について The Russians seem to be taking concerted aim at the Ukrainian people, going after the type of infrastructure、uh, that is indispensable for their survival,、uh, especially. ドクチャイエーイドクチャイエーイドクチャイエーイドクチャイエーイドクチャイエーイドクチャイエーイドクチャイエーイドクチャイエーイドクチャイエーイドクチャイエーイドクチャイエーイドクチャイエーイドクチ
東京の下町を焼き尽くすそれがルメイの指令でした東京への無差別爆撃しかし一般人に犠牲者が出ることを気に留める兵士はほとんどいませんでした我々はネスと激しい炎に包まれていましたあまりにも高い位置まで炎が上がっていたので地上の道路や建物が燃えているのまで見えましたとにかく暑い灼熱地獄のように燃えたぎっていました普通の爆弾が炸裂した時の煙は一旦立ち上ってから消えていきますですが焼夷弾は違います火は周りのものを飲み込み燃え続けるんですそれを消す手立てはありません水もそして砂も役に立たないんです真夜中熱し詰まった東京の街を炎が襲いました炎は北風に煽られ瞬く間に広がっていきます数百台の消防車が出動しましたが消すことはできません火は下町の木造住宅を凄まじい勢いで飲み込んでいきます。かつて、日本人を人間とは思わなかったアメリカ人パイロット、ジェリー・イエリンさん。But today... 今では無差別爆撃がゾッとするほど忌まわしいことだと思っています。市民への無差別爆撃は忌まわしいことです。人間にできる最悪のことだと思います。私は、The US drone strike in Kabul was a quote unquote mistake. An American bomb killed seven children. The US blamed it on faulty intel. Here's another one. US military concealed Syria air strike that killed dozens of civilians. It led to one of the largest civilian death tolls in the war. But there was no punishment for the US. And this has become a trend. The United States of America bombs countries at will and gets away with it. That's because nobody is holding them accountable. Neither international agencies nor international media, and certainly not our leaders. So tonight we want to tell you about an American war crime, yet another American war crime. This one is from Syria. What did the US do? They ran a death squad, a secret mission. They ran it for five years. This group, the death squad, pounded Syria with more than 100,000 bombs and missiles. 100,000. They killed innocent civilians. How do we know about this? A recent report has exposed this secret strike cell. This group was called Talon Anvil. What is Talon Anvil? That's code name for a secret American military unit. It operated from 2014 to 2019 for five whole years. This unit was led by members of the Delta Special Forces. Delta is a special operations force of the US Army. Their elite soldiers are said to be the best of the best. These officers thought they were neutralizing terrorist convoys, car bombs, command centers, enemy fighters, but on the ground, these bombs were killing civilians, farmers, children on the street, families fleeing the war, villagers taking shelter inside buildings. They were all hit. And this went on for five years. Let me repeat that. Talon Anvil was killing civilians for five years. Did nobody notice? Did nobody object? The answers are yes and yes. Their actions were noticed and there was some protest. Many officers, in fact, believed that civilian deaths were unavoidable. Allow me to quote what one officer told a newspaper off the record. This is what he said. The officer said, and I'm quoting, he, he saw so many civilian deaths, he eventually came to accept them as part of the job. The question is who gave the US his job to kill civilians in far off lands and then justify it? 
Who will hold the U.S. to account for this? The American war in Syria did not just inflict material damage, it took lies of innocence. Secret strike cells dropped bombs on civilians and then they tried to hide that fact. Who will investigate these deaths? The U.S. has not been honest about its war in Syria. The wide disparity in casualty numbers confirms that. Officially, the U.S.-led coalition admits to a little over 1,400 civilian deaths during the Syria campaign, 1,400. Independent monitors give a much bigger number. They believe that there were anywhere between 8 to 13,000 civilian deaths. So the question now is, is America hiding its war crimes in Syria? The noise of gunfire rose from all over the center of Peking. It was unremitting. On the streets leading down to the main road to Tiananmen Square, furious people stared in disbelief at the glow in the sky, listening to the sound of shots. Heading down the road was a hazardous business, but hundreds of people cheered as buses were set alight and army trucks caught fire too. They yelled and shouted, and then, as troop lorries were seen moving down the road, there was gunfire from those lorries. The troops have been firing indiscriminately, but still, there are thousands of people on the streets who will not move back. From Tiananmen Square, the sound of gunfire sounded like a battle, but it was one-sided. A line of soldiers was strung out, facing a huge crowd. The air was filled with shouts of fascists, stop killing. We were in the line facing the troops. They were about 250 yards away. Young people were singing the Internationale to a background of gunfire. After hours of shooting and facing a line of troops, the crowd is still here. They're shouting, stop the killing and down with the government. Are we just seeing history repeat itself? Chinese soldiers stationed along the border with India have some new weapons. They were struggling to operate in high altitudes in the difficult climatic conditions. So China is bringing in robots to help. You heard that right. China is deploying robotic weapons along the border with India. There are machine guns on wheels and they can be fired with a remote control. Beijing's decision to give robots to the PLA could have dangerous implications, not just for this region, but for the rest of the world too. Our next report tells you how. There is a new threat from China. It's these machines. Initially, they would remind you of remote controlled car toys. But look closely, these robots can do a lot more. They are equipped with the machine gun. Chinese soldiers can fire this gun from a distance and without any wires. There are cameras too, to watch what the adversaries are doing. China calls this vehicle the Shark Claw. 88 of these have been deployed in Tibet. Shark Claw has a partner. It's the Mule 200. This is a transport vehicle, so not as lethal as the Shark Claw, but the Mule would be very useful for the PLA. It can be used to transport valuable supplies like ammunition. China has deployed around 120 of these in Tibet. Robots are now joining the People's Liberation Army. Their induction is a prelude to something more sinister. For now, a soldier will operate these robots. But in the future, China wants weapons with a mind of their own. The PLA wants weapons with artificial intelligence. Beijing is moving swiftly to acquire such capabilities. The efforts began in 2017, when China unveiled a new artificial intelligence development plan. It advocated the use of AI in the military. Specific applications were listed out, like providing support to command and decision-making, military deductions, and development of defense equipment and related application. 
private sector was roped in to accelerate these efforts. Chinese big tech companies like Alibaba, Baidu, Tencent, Xiaomi and Huawei were labelled as AI champions. The PLA stands to benefit from the rapid strides these companies make. Already, different wings of the Chinese military are working on specific projects. The PLA ground force is developing robotics for the military. The Navy is working on autonomous submarines, while the Air Force is developing drones with an ability to think. These advancements should raise an alarm worldwide. Unfortunately, world powers are still ignoring the threat. This month, the United Nations tried to open negotiations for an international treaty on autonomous weapons. They failed. None of major weapons producing countries were willing to have a conversation. These stonewalling tactics work to Beijing's advantage. The PLA gets more time to perfect the AI technology and develop killer robots. Weapons that could make the world a more dangerous place. え、これを一体としてま、検討していきたいと考えているところです。どうあるべきなのか検討していきたいと述べました。But this is extremely important. Um, I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. There's likely to be, we don't know, but there's likely to be another dark ages, which it seems, my guess is there probably will be at some point. Um, I'm, not, I'm not predicting that we're about to enter the Dark Ages, but that there's some probability that we will, particularly if there's a Third World War. Um, then we want to make sure that there's enough of a, of a seed of human civilization somewhere else uh, to bring civilization back um, and perhaps uh, shorten the length of the Dark Ages. Um, yeah, I think that's why it's important to get a self-sustaining base, um, ideally on Mars, because Mars is far enough away from Earth that a, that um, a war on Earth, the Mars base might survive. It's more likely to survive than a moon base. But I think a moon base and a Mars base, um, that, um, that could perhaps help regenerate life back here on Earth would be really important, and to get that done before a possible World War III. Um, you know, last, last century we had two massive world wars, three if you count the Cold War. I think it's unlikely that we will never have another world war again. Um, there probably will be at some point. <laughs>